Hello, my friends. Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. It's, oh, it's the morning over already. I'm not seeing any comments as per usual. Instagram, I'm going to bring you a little over for a second so you can see half of me, maybe. Or maybe nothing. There we go. Okay. Hi, Manhaza. Hi, Michelle. So, guys, when you join me, hello, Liebote. When you join me, just say hi to me and uh, tell me where you're watching from. My name is Angela and I'm the owner and creator of Energy from Elfen und Helden. I'm a primary retailer for Dixiebel over here in Germany. So welcome to Germany. When you join me, hi Rima, thank you for being with us. When you join me, just let me know if you've been in Germany or if you have any stories about it. So um, I'm pretty nosy. Uh, I'm happy to hear all of it. Hi Jill, thank you for joining. Guys, we are working on this little table here. Um, and um, hi Annie, hi Brandy, hi to Michigan. Great. Guys, I've got a little sip of coffee. It is 9 p.m. over here, so it's my evening coffee time. So hi Kelly. So guys, um this table is painted in um we have in color wise we have rustic red which is uh, this color here we have uh mason dixon gray we have blueberry we have a tiny little bit of fluff and uh, we have the cacti and succulent uh, transfer by dixie bell and this is gonna go just like a couple of bits and pieces and you're probably wondering you know how do those colors really go together if you look at one of some of those um, of those beautiful, beautiful cacti succulents type, and they have exactly those those colors in, so that's the reason I was going for this color scheme. And we're also um, doing hi Corinne, doing some crackling. Hi Dixie Bell. I know, I know who is behind Dixie Bell and she's got a very sweet story. It's our sweet Emily. So uh, <laughs> she was almost adopted by some Germans getting lost at the airport. So um, that's a sweet story. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us, Emily. So um, you can see, I'm going to bring you a bit closer um, so you can see basically what going to bring it a little down because we're going to start with the oops with the crackling okay that's one of the wheels just came off so let's see if we can sorry there's a bit more <laughs> that's oh god that that's me again so um that's the way it is i'm sorry just my um ipod stand just lost the wheel so hi monica hi chile Moore. So hi Nina, hi Amy. So okay, can you see this crackling? Can you see the rustic red peeking through? And can you also see that there's basically still like all three colors in there? It's like the blueberry on the top and the Mason Dixon gray. And this is basically I'm going to show you how I created this look because um, with uh, crackle, I mean, this is basically done with crackle, but with crackle, hi Rachel, hi Monica. Um, um, Ute, das hast du bestimmt, und zwar ist das das um, um, Magnolia. Das kann ich dir zeigen. So, um, and this is the look we're basically going going for. And Crackle, I'm going to talk to you about it while I'm doing it. Crackle, um, you apply. I'm going to bring it a bit up so you can see what I do on top. Crackle is basically is basically um, a substance which is helping you to get this uh, this cracked effect. And that's the reason the rustic red is the basic color for it. That's why I've put it down first. 
and I only want to have it in certain spots, you know, I don't want to have the crackle all over the place. I just want to have like a couple of spots with the crackle. So that's the reason I've just done the rustic red with some of the spots. This is still the first coat on here. Um, this is basically when I decide if I like the colors or if I don't like him. And um, I quite like those colors together, especially when the, when the, um, when the uh, uh, transfer is going to go on there. So crackle. If you look at it, it's like a, a jelly, milky jelly. I've got like a little bit of vinegary smell, um, not too bad. So um, it's also water based, and this is the this is the consistency basically. It's a little little runny. If you have it a while, it might get a little thicker, but it doesn't do any harm. So also water based product before you use it mix it up nicely that's what i basically do with all the dixie bell products so and um then we are applying it i'm not using my um, nice brushes for it you know crackle is a little it's it's sticky almost like a gluey consistency so this is not exactly what i want to use my my nice and synthetic brushes with. So I'm gonna use the um, premium chip brush by Dixieville. So um, that's that's this one. It's got uh, it's uh, got syn synthetic bristles also. They're a little firmer, and um, this is uh, for me perfect to basically um, spread out the the crackle. So now I'm just going to get that crackle and I'm just going to spread that out on those areas I want to have it. And the thicker you put the crackle on, the thicker your cracks will going to be. So this area, this is now a, a flat area. So this is uh, pretty easy to apply um, as it is pretty sticky and um, you might have it a little thick on there if you have like a, a dresser or something like that standing up either if you can lay it down hi sis hi sis thank you for joining me um but if you can't lay it down or something like that just just watch it and keep your brush next to it when you have runs that you can basically clean up those um, um those um those runs so otherwise, you know, I mean, they will, they will basically enhance the, the crackled effect or the, the rustic effect, so to say, but if you don't want to have runs, just watch it when you have it on a, on a horizontal. So applying the crackle, I'm not too, um, well, not too accurate or something like that. Um, uh, nothing can happen in this stage. When you apply at the end, like the top color, that's the, um, the time basically where you should be a little wary what you're doing because the crackling is basically happening straight away or, you know, almost um, straight away as soon, you, um, as soon you apply the top color. So. Um, when it dries, it's got like a little bit of a sheen, um, a little bit of a sheen, but uh, as it is going to be covered up, you won't see any of that uh, in the crackles afterwards. So, um, guys, if you have any questions, just uh, put them in the comments and I will see that I answer them straight away. I'm trying to get better with my stuff, so I'm cleaning my my jar. <laughs> Um, before it sticks everything together and uh, shall close the jar before I drop it on the floor because you know me. I'm very good at doing that. Put it to the side for now. That's enough of the crackle. Um, obviously, you got to let that dry now. So I'm going to bring that a little up to you so you can see. That's, can you see that? It's almost, you know, it's already got like a little bit of a structure in there. And this is going to dry now. 
Okay, we're going to let that dry. And I've already prepared the feed, so we're going to go down to the feed and um, and uh, do the crackling. You know, so the first coat is the the rustic red here, and this is basically the cracks which are going to come through when um, when the crackling is happening. We can see that nicely here. Can you? Bring you a little closer. Bring you a little closer. Yeah. This is basically what is happening in a minute. So now um, you can spread it out also with a with a mud spatula. You know, if you want to have it uh, a little more smoother, you can do that also. If you don't want to have like that many thick cracks, or if you want to have like the top of the table not too not too structured the crackling is going to happen still so that's it water okay now we're going to prepare our paint so <laughs> Oh, thank you, Suzanne. That's the age. Those are my reading glasses. You know, without those, nothing is going to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hi, Becky. And those are cheap glasses also. Those are, I think, you know, it's like a 10 pack because I keep displacing my glasses. So I'm very good at that. So let's see, let's get down to the feet. I should move you a little further down. This is the woody band I've applied on top of that, you know, this like I've done basically first the crackling, put the top coat on and then I applied the woody band. If you have time, I have one more to, um, hi Liz, I have one more to, to put on. So um, if you have time, we can do that together. I can show you how basically Managed to get that on there that nicely. Mm. Um, crackle in small areas. If you use crackle, oh, I've got to put it up there. If you use the crackle in small areas with the same top and bottom color, does it stain or just show crackle? Um, any. If you use the same colors at the bottom and the top of the crackle, you won't see much of the crackle. You might have like uh, some sort of structure, but you can only see the crackle if you have like a contrasting color underneath, you know, otherwise you won't see the cracks, you know. So um, you may lay them out later with some with some wax, but that's that's not really the point. That's the reason I've got like, also on the legs here i've got some areas with the the rustic red and the other areas i've painted in the in the in the color which i want to have the top also and uh, then you're going to see basically the the cracks so um now i'm going to lay out my colors first this is my crackling brush put that into the water <laughs> So, baby wipes, I'm going to need some of the, excuse me, some of the blueberry. I don't need much paint, just, just a very little. Blueberry is like this, um, yeah, this like uh, grayish, purpley blue. And chalk mineral paints, but well, they are, you can blend them nicely. Thank you, Nina. You can blend them nicely. They're water-based, they're VOC free. You mix them up before you use them. Because also, you know, as they are water-based, the great benefit of those is that you can basically paint onto your project straight away. You don't need to do um, any sanding or something like that. Um, you can basically paint onto it straight away. So we have fluff just like for a little lighter, uh, a little lighter shade, so to say. 
this also the first jar you've seen is like an eight ounce jar this is like the the biggest jar and it's like a one size in between also you can get all their paints so white i don't need much at all i should put that on that plate also use my fingers that's far too much however do you love using your fingers with the paint? I love it. I love having paint all over my fingers. <laughs> you, you may have noticed. You may have noticed, guys. Hi, Belinda. Hi to Oklahoma. The blueberry color is very pretty. It is very, very pretty. I like it also. So, fluff. And... Let's get some Mason Dixon Gray. Open up a new jar. There's a tiny little bit left in the other jar, but I'm going to use it. Ja, da kommen wir gleich. Ja, nee, das ist nicht das Crackle in eine Richtung, aber die Farbe, die oben drüber kommt, muss in eine Richtung. Gute. Das Crackle selber ist nicht so dramatisch. Wichtig ist, wenn du mit der Farbe äh, oben drüber gehst, dass du da nur in eine Richtung pinselst. Das kommt gleich. So, Mason Dixon Gray is, um, is like a, yeah, it's like a purpley gray. It's a very clean gray, I find. It's got like a slight purpley shade. So this makes it for me a very clean gray. This is my next to Gravel Road, one of my favorite grays. And Gravel Road, for example, is, um, is pretty dirty. So, and the Mason Dixon is uh, pretty clean. So, put that on here also. It looks yummy, doesn't it? So, uh, hang on. Go. Okay. Water. Paint doesn't dry. Always keep, always try to remember to keep a bucket of water next to me so I can. Uh, I'll get all the paints I don't need out of the way. Safer. People follow me now that I'm the master of disaster. My hands always look like this. That's great. So now, um, I was just asked in German um, that you're supposed to um, apply the crackle just in one direction. Not exactly the crackle itself. Um, the crackle itself is pretty tough. Um, but when you apply now the top color, then you should only brush in one direction because if you brush back, the crackling is going to happen pretty much straight away. And if you brush and it starts crackling and you brush back, you're basically um, brushing over the already happening cracks. So you're basically um, blocking the cracks again, you know. So this is why you should. Um... Ah, so it's nice working. So that's um, that's basically what we're going to do. You can go in a cross hatch. This gives like very irregular cracks, um, but still don't. You can maybe go over them once again, but you, you know, you should watch it that you don't block block up the cracks again. You know, thank you, Belinda. So, guys, and now the fun begins. I have three colors, and I want to use the three colors basically in one go because those are the ones which are going to um, be, you know, on the whole on the whole project. So I'm basically taking my. I'm using the premium chip brush. I'm using a premium chip brush for the reason. It is um, in in comparison with the uh, synthetic brushes, the bristles are a little firmer 
and I can, um, I can, for my feeling, I can apply more paint in one, in one stroke, you know, that's, um, that's why I prefer for those projects and it's a rough project anyway. So, um, okay. Mm. All right. So I'm going to get mainly the Mason Dixon gray. And I'm going to get a good load because I don't want to um, go over it um, too many times. And as I said, this is a rough project and I'm just like a tiny little bit, tiny little bit of the fluff. So, and now that's basically how I did those cracks on the top. And now I'm just like going to go see if you can see. Just like this, um, put it on one stroke. To get the paint on here. There's also some booty band on there. So the same thing on the bottom, reload my brush. You can see this like those three colors basically mixing into each other you know this is basically the um <laughs> yes my cow spots you know me so um <laughs> all in two spots so do the same thing up here or down there you can go over it once again as soon you know the crackling hasn't started yet and um, basically go over it. So, but not too often. I shall leave that and I shall go to the next area. A little bit of the fluff. And the same thing. I'm going in a cross hatch. So down there, there's no crackle. I'm gonna basically just mix those colors together there. And um, pretty soon the magic should start happening. But this is basically how I get like this uh, multicolored um, top coat for the, for the crackles. So. No cracks there, basically. Just brushing the paint on here. Second coat to cover that up a little bit. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go to the next area. And you can see the crackling is already starting to happen. So, you know, basically, if I would... Oh, this piece is so heavy. If I would... Um, go back over those uh, areas, I would uh, cover up the cracks. So that's the reason, you know, when you, when you, um, when you apply the crackle itself, it's not that important that you only brush it on in one direction, but when you apply the top color, you should avoid going back and forth because you basically cover up the, the cracks. So this is what we're going to do all the way around. Again, I'm loading my brush with all three colors, you know, Mason Dixon gray on one end, blueberry on the other end. So it's nicely loaded, a little bit of fluff to get those mixed together. And then I'm going to go over those areas I want to have it again start here so 
down there where it's only the the mason dixon grain the blueberry there is no crackle on there basically i'm gonna blend those areas a little in can do that so let that work the crackling starts pretty much straight away so and i've applied the crackle last week i've applied it last week load my brush with all three colors again you can blend it on there already if you want to also it depends uh, what you want to do let's see no crackle down there just on top here just quickly smooth that out as long as it hasn't started crackling you may do that so you can see all the crackling happening there already so that that's pretty much starts straight away so this is the reason if i would go over there now with my with my brush in the other direction i would close up the the cracks again so this is basically the whole trick same thing up here go to this spot so when i see all the areas where the crackling is going on i can still decide how I want to blend those in with the colors. You can seal it um, afterwards, but you don't have to. So let's go a little further around. This is a fun thing. This is an absolute fun thing. So, load my brush. So, doing a bit of a crosshatch here because I want to mix those colors a little together. And not have it like stripey on there. Down there is no crackle. So I can brush there, tap a little to have those areas all covered. And then I leave it and let the crackling happening. So load my brush, three colors. All three colors on there. I load my brush a little richer than I would usually do. Bonsoir, Joël. <clears throat> so. Okay. Let's see? Go around those areas. So right to go over it just like you know as soon as it um as long as it hasn't started with a crackling to go over it at that point so let's see this area here can you see all this i'm gonna go a little a little round like that so we can see this part here and go right in that corner, up, down, up, down here is no crackling. I can just go over it like this. Gently tap those corners. A little bit more blueberry here. 
So you see, I'm not bothering also, you know, for blending the colors together now. I'm not uh, bothering using different brushes for the for the paints, for the uh, single paints. This is rustic anyway, so I'm going to go for it like this. Same thing. They are pretty much nicely mixed now here on this plate. The colors, as you can see, so I'm just picking them up from there. And again, cross hatching, having those areas. I haven't just gently. Okay, down there, no crackle. Go over it as it was this first coat only. Get a bit of blueberry in there. Have that shaded up. So now we need a little more crackling happening here. So, and I'm really offloading my brush on there to get like enough paint on here for the crackling to happen. I'm not sure if I have, yeah, I think there's some crackle down there. So, cross hatch. As I said, if you, if you, if you want to have like the cracks be more in like one direction, you go with, uh, with uh, um, a straight stroke. If you want to have it a little irregular, um, then you can do this cross hatch, um, this cross hatch stroke. And I find the cross hatch is uh, when I work with uh, multiple colors, usually you only use one color for crackling for the top color. But if you want to have um, a mixture of the colors, it looks nicer when you do the cross hatch because you mix the colors up a little more. So that's basically how I did those. Let's see. How I did those cracks. And. Obviously, I didn't put any crackle on those uh, wood bands. I like to have some of that rustic red peeking through. Just unloading some of that paint on there. The crackle on top, I'm going to let dry. I'm going to show you quickly, basically, how quick. Can you see the crackling happening there? How quick that basically is um is starting so that's the reason you shouldn't you shouldn't um brush back on it there's a beautiful cracks here and then you can see the rustic red coming through so this is basically now the the color scheme of the table and uh next week we're going to apply the we're going to apply the transfer on top i'm gonna let that crackle dry on top i'm gonna show you quickly the top again even i smooth that out it's already um it's almost like puddling you know it's like um how, is that correct correctly said somebody you know after all i'm german sometimes um sometimes <laughs> Sometimes I'm inventing new words for you, so. <laughs> um, exactly, Michelle, it's magic. So um, this is almost like puddling, you know, building some, some puddles. And basically when you have it, as I said, if you have it on a horizontal, um, it, uh, you may get runs, you know, so watch it. If you use crackle on a, on a horizontal surface, watch it. So now we're going to apply another woody band here. You can get those woody bands also with um, with Dixie Bell. 
And this is the Bucci Band uh, 1237, which is on there. So if you look at it, this is the, the, 12, the 1237. So as it is too big in one piece, you know, as it is too big in one piece, I've cut the ends. I've cut those two ends basically off so that it fits perfectly in those areas, you know. So you can do that. And uh, still, I'm going to keep those two ends. You never know, you know, they're, they're pretty, 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 <laughs> pretty, pretty. So for sure, you can use them on another project. So never, ever throw a piece of wood you bend away. You never know when you need it. And the nice thing or the most, the greatest benefit of the, hang on, guys. The greatest benefit of the woody bands is that uh, when they are solid, they are hard like wood. They behave like wood. So you can, you can send them, you can drill them, you can saw them. Um, you can, if you have a fragile piece, you can break it, obviously, you know. But uh, when they are warm, you can, when they are warm, you can basically wrap them around any shape you want to have. That's the, the reason they are called would you bend, because when they are warm, they are bendy. I'm going to show you. You can warm them up uh, either with a, you can warm them up with a hair gun, uh, with a hair gun. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, you can warm them up with a hair dryer. You can use a heat gun or you can use an embossing gun. So I'm trying to put all three in one word, guys. So that was that was like the speedy, <laughs> speedy version. Okay, um, I'm gonna warm that up. Let's see that you can see. I'm gonna put that up here so you can see it a little better there. You can also warm it up on a griddle. I just have like this one piece here. I just didn't take my griddle out. And you can apply those to any surface you can think of. You can apply that to wood, you can apply that to metal, you can apply that to glass, to plastic, to just anything. You can already see that bending. So, you see this? Now it is this nice and flexible and you can shape that around any, you know, whatever. If I could have laid that around this corner. I would have done that if I had uh, enough of those uh, ornaments left, but uh, I didn't. Are oh, you going to crackle, guys? That's good. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Thank you. That's sweet. I'm happy you like it. So, um, as I said, you applied with uh, wood glue. Any... Well, good quality wood glue. Um, and as I said, no matter what surface you're applying it onto, you always use wood glue. So Dixiebel, I think um, they've also got um, the tight bond on their website. So that's perfect. Uh, that goes perfect with the, with those ornaments. So this is a bit of a messy part. Well, I'm I'm messy anyway, so I'm sure you do you do much better than I do. I'm pretty messy, and um, I didn't say that before. You can paint those uh, ornaments uh, before you apply them. You can paint them after you've applied them. You can paint use any any paint you can think of. Uh, you can stain those also because they behave like wood. You know. Hi to Spain. Hi Sarah. So now I'm just um, spreading out the glue. Don't just like leave it like that and think, oh, that'll be fine. Make sure that you really have like the whole surface covered. So, and it's always the, the thing having enough glue on there and um, not enough to stick. I rather have a little too much on there. Everything what squeezes out on the sides, I can basically take off with, uh, with a baby wipe, a wet cloth, a wet brush, whatever. And those woody bands come in, I don't know, you know, loads of different shapes. So, I'm gonna find 
middle. Careful, I'm not going to touch the. So, so, pretty much straight. So, as this is pretty. Oh, but I'm there. Oh, there's loads of paint on the floor. Got it again. So, I'm just cleaning the biggest mess up first before I really get it on there. I'm just using a damp brush at the moment just to get like those main boo-boos out here. And then I'm going to heat that up again and um, stick it nicely on there. That glue, um, that glue dries clear I'm using, so I'm not worried too much about it. Baby guys, also. Gotta be careful, it's like the And that goes pretty nicely just with a wet brush. Get that glue out of those detailed areas. So now I'm just grabbing my heat gun again to um, warm that nicely up. Get it a little flexible again because that is already cooled down. You can say they need about the same time to cool down as they need to heat up and the thicker they are the longer they need to to do that so now you can see now I can really really squash it on there now you can see there's some more glue coming out on the sides make sure that you especially put down the the sides and this is now a good sign that glue coming out there that is getting good contact with the surface and snuggling itself nicely on there. So by pushing on it, even when it's like in the soft state, by pushing on it, you're not um, damaging any of the any of the details. They are staying perfectly in shape. So, just picking up now some of that glue. And it looks still white, that glue, but this is going to dry clear. And it works nicely with that. And those. Um, ornaments I've painted in rustic red first and then I dry brushed the uh, Mason Dixon gray and the and the blueberry on there so there we go nicely cleaned up And they come in loads of different uh, ornaments and trims and stuff like that. As I said, Dixie Belle is also carrying them. So if you want to um, shop those products, pop over to the Dixie Belle page and check for your local retailer there. And guys, if you haven't done it yet, pop over to my page and leave me a like there. So I do a couple of lives a week. I also do lives in German, not only in English. So for my German friends. So, there we go. There we go. Close the glue up before I lose the lid. So, and that's basically the look we're going for. Crackling and woody band. And next week we're going to 
apply the set straight. So as long as it's not, there wasn't pretty much straight, wasn't it? As long as it's not completely dried, you can, um, you can move it. <laughs> you can even move it after it has dried. So that also works. <laughs> That also works. So, guys, I'm just going to come quickly into side for you. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. Ja, Ute, Tightbond ist wirklich gut. Also, <lacht> du hast mich schon kämpfen sehen und äh, Tightbond funktioniert wirklich gut. Okay, also a lot of Dixie Bell uh, retailers, they also carry the, the wood events. So uh, guys, always look for your local retailer. I'm a retailer over here in Frankfurt in Germany, so um, I'll be happy to help you also. But uh, always check for your local retailer first. Every one of us needs it. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for joining me. As I said, if you haven't done it, pop over to my page, leave me a like there. Hello, Anja. Oh, wie schade. Ciao, the replay. <laughs> So um, pop over to my page, leave me a like there if you haven't done that yet uh, to see more from my work. I would be ha very happy if you do that. Um, uh, Linda needs to watch replay also. Oh, thank you, Linda. You will, you like that. That was fun. Rima, you're welcome. Thank you for, for watching. I really appreciate your time. So guys, again, my name is Angela. I'm the owner of Creative Energy from Elf and Helden. I'm a primary retailer over here in Frankfurt in Germany. I'm so proud to be on the Dixie Bell page. Uh, I'm happy that you joined me. I'm wishing you a great evening, afternoon, day. It is almost 10 p.m. over here. So um, wherever you are, you have a great time. I'll see you next Tuesday or on my page if you if you go kind of come and follow me. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye, Emily. Thank you. <laughs>